G'day from Australia. I'd like to start by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land from which I'm broadcasting. I'd also like to pay my respects to Elders past and present. My name's Ashley Davis. Welcome to my coding live stream. Uh, I've just had two weeks off from live streaming, but today I'm picking up this project again and moving forward with development of my Kanban board extension for Visual Studio Code. I'm going to be doing my coding in TypeScript and using Jest to enable uh, test-driven development. <clears throat> In my work, you'll be able to watch as I create code that will allow a modified uh, Kanban board to be saved back to a, uh, a markdown format file. That's what I'm doing today. <clears throat> I'm going to do my best to explain what I'm doing while I'm working on it uh, and, and why I'm doing it, which is really important. Please feel free to reach out to me on Twitter. My Twitter handle is AshleyDavis75. <clears throat> uh, you can see on screen what I've got here is the this is the prototype. So before I started actually developing this for real and doing the test-driven development and you know putting a, a proper process in place, uh, I built this prototype. So I'm, here I'm using a, a, a component that's available on NPM called React Trello. And I've put it in a Visual Studio Code extension. And you can see here that I can, I can move these around just like a normal Trello board or any normal Kanban board. But if you, if you watch on the left here, you'll see that changing. Now this is just a prototype. There's lots of rough edges. There's lots of lots of edge cases. Um, there's no error checking. I, I just wanted to make sure that I could that this was feasible, uh, and that I that I could actually build this because I didn't want to go down a you know a real deep rabbit hole on this uh, and uh, you know and basically get lost. So that's the prototype. Let's put that away. I'll just close down that Visual Studio Code that I was running there. Uh, before we get started, uh, this project is available on GitHub. Uh, my GitHub, Ashley Davis. The project is Taskboard VS Code Extension. Let me zoom in a bit. <clears throat> uh, if you scroll down, there's some instructions here on how to get started with it. Um, there's a link to the original repo, which is a great demonstration of how to get a React web UI running in a Visual Studio Code extension. And that's what I started with here. Uh, please feel free to grab your own copy of this code. You can download it from here directly in a zip file, or you can clone it using Git. Um, or if you want to contribute, please please do consider contributing. Uh, you can click the fork button here to fork it, get your own copy of it, clone your own copy of this repo, make changes, and submit pull requests. That's something I'm going to cover uh, possibly in a future uh, in, in a future live stream. How to do that? Now, we're actually in the seventh session of this series of live streams. So there's a lot that's been done already. There's a lot that you've missed out on if you're just new coming here. Um, but you can catch up on my YouTube page. So go to uh, YouTube, the Data Wrangler channel. Uh, if you go to playlists, you can see I've got two playlists. Um, the one you're looking at the moment is the task board coding live stream. So if you want to catch up on that, dive down into the playlist. Um, you can watch through all these if you want to see how this came about from, from early days. Okay, just give me a second here. Cool. So I'm, I'm carrying on test-driven development from last time. Um, and the first thing I want to do here in my terminal that I've got open, I'm using Windows 10 here, by the way, uh, but I've got access to all the Linux commands. So... Uh, I'm not missing out on anything. <clears throat> and I got those Linux commands by installing git bash. Um, and that, that allows you to use Linux commands from a regular Windows 10 terminal, which is just awesome. <clears throat> okay, the first thing I want to do is just run my tests to make sure that my tests from the last, uh, the last session, which was two weeks ago, don't forget, I'm running this for the first time in two weeks. I have not touched it since then. I just want to make sure, you know, that it, that it, it was left in a working condition. You can see here that I've got a bunch of tests here already. Um, all 11 of them are passing. There's 11 in total, 11 passing. Um, Test-driven development is just one of those great ways that, um, one of those great techniques that enables you to pick up a project again after you've left it for a while. So I, I, could, I could leave this project for any amount of time and I can come back to it fairly easily. Um, I know any NPM project is just NPM test, right? That's the convention, uh, you know, whether you're using Jest or Mocha or Cypress or some other testing framework, NPM test is the usual convention to, to run your tests. And that's the way that I've got this project configured. I'm going to start Visual Studio Code from this directory by typing code dot. Uh, I, I closed all the files here. Normally I just leave them open. Oh, I've got a new, I've got a new version of Visual Studio Code. <clears throat> 
hopefully that doesn't cause any problems. <clears throat> so this is the project. Um, I'm not going to worry too much about the structure of this. Um, we'll come back and we'll do an overview of the structure of a Visual Studio Code extension in a future live stream. Um, uh, but if you, if you do want to kind of see where this came from, please do watch the live streams from the start. I've got a function here I've been building um, that converts a uh, the abstract syntax tree for a markdown, the, or the AST as it's known, for a markdown file. So that's like a pre-processed, pre-parsed version of the markdown file. Um, it's getting passed into this function, and in, res in response, it's returning a Kanban board data object. Now, this Kanban board data object that's being returned here, that's the data format that I needed in to be use, use, used by React Trello. So that's the input to React Trello. <clears throat> now this, this function, um, I mean, there's still a lot of work to do on this function in terms of edge cases and error checking and stuff like that. But I've got a really good basis now for this function. This, this function, if you watch the previous live, live streams, you can watch this function getting built up from one line of code to this many lines of code. It's going to get a little bit more complicated yet. <clears throat> uh, the tests for it are here. I'm just going to zoom out. I'm just going to zoom out so you can see all the tests. Some of the, some of them are folded, so you, you can't actually even see all the code here. But you can see there's a lot there, right? You can see that there's a lot of tests here that have already been written. <clears throat> I've got a function here that I built um, that I've been updating as I go through each live stream actually um, this builds test data for me so this builds input to the tests that I'm creating and then I'm just gonna fold down some of these so you can see that there's a bunch of tests here for you know various types of input data um, testing that they can get passed or, or deserialized correctly to my Kanban board data uh, the last thing I got to was basically storing uh, the AST path. So this thing here is, is like a path into the abstract syntax tree that allows me to know where this um, column in the Kanban board or where this task in the Kanban board came from, where it came from in the Markdown abstract syntax tree. The reason I added that, this, is, this actually kind of complicates things, but I had to add that because if I didn't have that, you know, I'd, I'd have to basically write a deserializer from the Kanban board data, or sorry, a serializer in this case, from the Kanban board data back to Markdown. And the problem with that is that if there was any data in there, which there could easily be because Markdown is a very general format, if there was any data in there that didn't conform to the Kanban board format that I've created, or, well, I didn't create it, it, it you know, it, it's it's the to-do MD format. Anyway, that, that aside, um, if we, if we did that, if we just blindly, naively kind of serialize back to Markdown, we might lose the data that's there that doesn't conform to the format, which means we're losing user data. So I had to pull out a few tricks basically to get around this. And I'm, what I'm doing is I'm using the uh, uh, this this path here that's generated by the Ramda library. You have to see last uh, the last episode in this series to see how that all came together. <clears throat> uh, I've got a to-do list down the bottom here. Um, so... These are, the, these are the tests that I know that I still want to write <clears throat> to complete this. Not, not just to complete this function, but to complete the full capabilities of being able to get from Markdown to Kanban board data and back again. <clears throat> I'm almost finishing the... I'm almost finished the tests for loading tasks. I've just got a couple, couple more edge cases here um, that I may not even worry about today. What, what I really want to get to is the... the Probably a new function. I'm probably going to write a whole new function for basically um, updating the existing Markdown abstract syntax tree with the edited data, the data that's been edited in the Kanban board. <clears throat> now, there are some issues in the code here. If you remember the uh, at the end of the last session, I think... Um, you know, one, one thing I've done here is I've hard coded a one and, you know, doing a bit of hard coding is okay in test driven development because you're taking it really incrementally, really step by step. And sometimes you kind of, when you put a simple test in, you kind of have to fudge the code and, and hard, hard code it a little bit to get that test to pass. And only by adding new tests, do you really kind of flesh out, you know, the full capabilities of the code. 
because if you're doing um you know the sort of ideological utopia of test driven development you shouldn't write any production code unless you've already written a test for it so i i can't just go and change this magic number i can't do that without writing a test for it so that's what i'm going to do now um mind you I, I don't always code this way i don't always code this dogmatically uh but i'm just doing it for the exercise i'm just really doing it for the live stream to try and do this as i guess properly as i can <clears throat> So I want to write some. I want to write a test now that's broken because of that, and I'd already identified it here in my to-do list from last time. Like I want to basically have a, a task in a second column that can have an AST path. Um, so that's going to be broken because uh, when it's in the second column, that number one, that's going to be wrong. I think it's going to be like number. F would be so there's zero is the first element one is the next one two would be the title three so it's going to be three i think it's going to be three for the second column but i need to and, and this will come from the list item index as well um you know I, I literally think it's just going to be that the answer to this problem no no it's not that sorry it's the next one up isn't it it's the, the child index i think it's going to be the child index that i that i just want to plug that in and you might say, you know, why don't I just do that and, you know, and, and job done. <laughs> but I have no way, I have no way yet to verify that that is the actual right behavior. So that's why I'm going to write the test. Um, I had this item here, second column can have an AST path. Um, I don't think that's relevant. I thought that was going to be relevant. I don't think that's relevant. So I'll just get rid of that. Uh, but let's write this next test. Oh, before I do this, I'm going to start up my testing in live reload mode. Uh, I'll get these side by side. So I'm going to run uh, npm run test watch, which is my standard convention for running tests in live reload mode. So what this means is that we're running jest here, you can see with the watch flag. And what it's going to do is it's going to basically check whenever any of my files have changed, and it's going to... Um, it's going to rerun the tests as I'm writing code, basically. So that's why they call it live reload, because I'm live coding and it's going to update. Um, now, I think my new test is going to be basically very, pretty much the same as this one here. This first loaded task has an AST path, because that's testing what I want. And this is the one where kind of where I hard coded the one in. So it's, it's hard coded the expectation that one is returned from that. But if I change this to uh, have a different result. It's gonna it's gonna result in a failing test. So let's let's just say um, task from second column has an AST path. So that's what we're testing. <clears throat> and I've got my test data function here already, right? Uh, I can I can actually put multiple columns into this. This is a refactor or I did earlier that 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 defines. A column and it generates a markdown abstract syntax tree that represents that so I'm going to change this to be column one I'm going to replicate that here uh, this this is the second column so I'll call it column two I don't actually need a task in my first column so I'll just leave that empty and, and I'll just have that remain named as task <clears throat> Now, this is going to return, this, this could be a broken test, but I think what I'm expecting here is for 3 to come back, right? And I, I, can, I can check that in a minute to make sure that that's correct. Um, in fact, I can look at the board data. This is something I like to do. Uh, before, before, I, before I go on, actually, what, I, what I'm doing now is um, I could be about to break all these other tests, right? What I really want to do at this stage is just focus on this one broken test. So, you know, because I'm doing test-driven development, I've written my test first, it's broken. It's not, I'm not I'm not 100% sure it's correct. I think that's gonna be number three. I just wanna verify first that that is what is actually expected. Uh, but just to cut down on the noise, I'm gonna type um, it.only there. That allows me to focus just on this one single test and it's gonna skip all the other tests. So that's a great way just to quickly focus in one particular test. So you can see everything else here has been skipped. We've got the one broken test. What I want to do now is I'm just going to console log uh, this test data and just to make sure that my expectations of it are correct. Um, is that going to work? Let's just see if that works. I might have to do a, a JSON stringify to actually look at the whole thing. 
<clears throat> so you can see here it's it's printed out the, the, this data structure here so I can easily see what I'm working with here uh, but the things I want to look at the things I want to look at here are just plus you know they're, they're not probably um, unpacked by console.log Hang on, what am I doing? I've just accidentally jumped to the wrong file there. Let's go back. Okay, so here we are again. So let's do a JSON stringify. Now that'll actually print out the whole data structure. So this is one of the things I love about JavaScript, is just it's it's so easy just to print this massive data structure like that. So you can check um, I, I, what I want to check here is the AST path, or the path through the hierarchy, uh, to this task here. I think, I think it's that that I want. So it's... What do I want here? Kind of feel like something's wrong here. Like, let's just go from the back anyway. So it, it's it's definitely going to be the first task in the column. So, yep, it's the first. It's item zero in this cards array. Oh, I'm looking. I'm looking at the board data here. What I, what I actually want to look at is the. Sorry, I'm looking at the output. I've, I've, I've put this totally in the wrong place. Let's go back one line. So I just used Alt Up to get that back there. Silly mistake. I wasn't. I wasn't even looking at the right thing. So I was looking at the output, not the input. The what I want to do is look at the input for the test. So I was I was confusing myself there and like, oh, okay, this is one of the dangers of putting down a project and coming back to it after two weeks, is that you do have to kind of reconstitute your mental model of how it works. <clears throat> okay, this is better. This is this is so this huge data structure is the synthesized markdown abstract syntax tree. <clears throat> and what I'm looking for here What am I looking for? I'm looking for the list item, I think. So this thing here. So that's that's the first that's where we're looking for uh, item 0. And that's under children, so we got that. And that's in an array. So it's the how many how many items in this array? It's a little bit hard to tell here, but you can see that's the that's item zero, item one, item two, item three. So it it is what I think what what I thought it was, item three. And so this is a generic tree structure, right? So we've got children again here, so and that's what children is there, and that's under the uh, that's under the root object. So this is right. Basically, I'm just all I'm doing here is verifying that my expectations are correct, and um, you know I, I just I got that right to start with, but I just wanted to check because again it's been so long since I looked at this project, you know, and it's just good to double check stuff like that. So let's get rid of that console login. Now, what do I do to make this test pass? Like it's pretty easy, like we saw it before. Um, if if I'm right, it's just this, we're, we're doing this iteration here over the top level in the Markdown Abstract Syntax tree. And so I think it's just a case of plugging in this child index. So we're getting rid of the hard coding. No, it did not pass. So what did I get wrong? <clears throat> Let's just maximize this so that we can kind of see easily what we're looking at here. Oh, okay, so I, I got my test expectations wrong, basically. So I, I'm, I'm checking here that there is only one lane uh, or one column, but we have actually added two columns as part of this test. So that's something I got wrong in the test to start with. So changing that to two should get me a passing test if I'm lucky. Not yet. Oh, I've seen something else I've done wrong here as well. Now, I just... I'm a bit surprised that this is broken. 
Okay, I'm, I'm just going to fix the thing that I know should be fixed anyway, is that we're actually looking at data from the second column here. So I'm just going to change that to the second item in, the, in this lanes array. And there should be one card, That's, that should be correct. So my test should be set up correctly now. Oh yeah, it is cool. So I've got to the actual real failure now, which is something to do with the AST, which is supposed to get back this uh, children three, children zero in an array. Ah, I know what this is. So this is this is an actual problem in the code that I just wrote. It's not a problem with the test. So what I'm what I'm what it's expecting here is expecting a three. Uh, what I'm getting is a two. Um, that's wrong, and I and I know why it's wrong. It's because this loop iterate every time this loop iterates, it iterates over two children. So the first, so there's actually like two top child nodes for every lane. So it's a little bit of a complicated data structure to pass, but that's because it's a generic data structure. I mean, it's this data structure is not designed for for Kanban board, um, Kanban boards. So I mean, that's the reason why I'm writing this code in the first place, right? So that um, so that I can make it work for the Kanban board. So I can sort of mold this data, manipulate this data, mold it into this format that I need it to be in. <clears throat> so you can see here, I'm pulling out a child here with child index plus one. Um, what I might do actually, just to make this code a little bit cleaner, is take that out to a variable. So make it uh, next child index. It can be hard to come up with good names when you're working with kind of general data formats like this, but um, if, if a better name comes to me, I will, I will get it in there. So we've got that. Actually, I could call it, because I'm calling this list root, and, and this is the root um, in the tree, the root of the list of tasks. I could actually just call this, um, sorry, list child index. Yeah, cool. That'll do. That's a slightly better name. It's a slightly more accurate name as to as to what what that is doing. Now I want to pass that in here instead of child index. I want to pass that. Now if I'm right, this should get me my passing test. Cool, it does. Now the the problem here though is that I you know there was a couple of problems with this test. I had to change this number here from one to two, and I had to make sure I was pulling out the correct lane. So I I did kind of after I wrote my code, I did kind of mess with my test. So I kind of need to test my test again, if that makes sense. It's a bit meta, but I've got to do that again. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set that back to what it was hard coded to be one. I should get. Uh, my failing test. So I, what I'm doing here is I'm testing that my test can fail. Like if you've if you've messed with your test and you've got a bug in there that means your test can never fail, it's a pointless test. It's a useless test. It's not carrying its weight. So you know you got to deal with that. Um, what I'm going to do now is I, I should still um, hopefully have all the other tests passing. I hopefully have not broken anything. So let's get rid of that it dot only, and we're gonna we're gonna go back to running all the tests now. Uh, and what I should see, what I expect to see, is passing all the passing tests plus the one failing test. And then when I go back to the code and I make that code change again, plugging in the correct index for that child, now I should have all passing tests. So I've got 12 passing tests now. And I fixed a small, a small um, issue in the code. So I'm going to commit this now. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use source tree to commit. Um, I, unfortunately, I can't zoom source tree up, so hopefully, hopefully you can see this okay. So I'm just, I use source tree. I like to use source tree rather than the command line in this case, because it's just got a nice interface here that I can use to kind of view the changes. Uh, another tool that I use is called WinMerge. Let me show you WinMerge right now. So I've got um, external diff configured. Um, I think it comes configured out of the out of the box. You just have to install one of the supported external diff tools. So uh, external diff, um, you could hit control D. So for me, I've got that configured to bring up uh, WinMerge. WinMerge is great. It kind of shows you on the left here, um, kind of like an overview of what changed. So I can see that there's some yellow down here where there's some changes. I can jump straight down to there. Um, I can I can select, uh, double click to select an individual line and down at the bottom here, it kind of shows me uh, one line versus the other. So this is a really great way to see, you know, how it was on the left here, 
and how it is now on the right. And it's just a great way to do your own kind of self-review. You know, it's just like peer review, but it's just for yourself. It's just like, you know, go through this code. Make sure you understand it. Make sure you know what you're committing. Um, make sure you know what's just going into your code. It's just like fundamental to being a coder, right? You've got to understand this stuff. Um, and also make sure you haven't, um, you know, you're not committing any obvious embarrassing bugs. Now, um, this is an open source project and, you know, like I honestly don't care if I commit a bug. I, you know, I'm probably going to commit bugs. It doesn't matter really. But, you know, if you're working on a team, um, and you commit some code, you know, you don't want your boss to find an obvious mistake that you could have found just by having a quick look at it, right? So that's good. I have a look at the test here. Um, all I've done here is added the new test. So I haven't modified any other tests. I didn't need to. Um, I've got a real good function here for making my, my test data. So otherwise I'd have a huge amount of test data in my test here, but it all looks pretty good. So um, this is a fix for Hard coded um, index in, you know, when uh, what was it when generating an AST an abstract syntax tree path uh, for a, a task in the Markdown abstract syntax tree. Cool, that's committed. Uh, I got all my my authentication set up to work from the command line, so I'll do my git push from the command line. So that is going up live. As you are watching this, I'm pushing a code change up to my Git repo. So you can go to Ashley Davis GitHub. Um, you can check out my task board project and you can see that change there right now and you can get it for yourself if you want to follow along. So let's restart my live reload for my tests and see what I'm going to do next. I do actually think um, I've, I've got some other stuff to do here. It's not like I don't have other stuff to do here for loading tasks, but I kind of want to do move on to onto the editing of tasks now, this bit here. Uh, but I'm going to do that in a separate file, uh, in a separate test file. I'll start a new file in just a moment. Uh, I might actually put the... yeah. No, you know what? I, I, I will do it in here. I will do it in here, but I'll start a new test suite. And later on, I'll probably break it out into a separate file. But just to get started quickly, I might do that here. And, and I'll put the function here as well. I've already called this converter. And I was sort of thinking, is that a bad name? Like, I should probably, this is a generic name. I should probably think of a better name for it, right? But um, uh, it's really hard. Like, what do I call it? Do I call it this this wacky long name here? Like, Markdown AST to Board Data Converter or something? Like, it's it's a, it's a difficult thing to name. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to collapse that. I'm just going to come up with a function here. Um, I, I just need a starting point. Like, I don't know, I don't know where this is going to end up. I, I've got an idea, but I don't really know where this is going to end up. Um, so I just need a starting point, and I will. I'll, I'll look at. I'll look at what my first test is going to be, basically, just to see what that starting point is. So back in the tests here. Okay, I'm gonna. I'm gonna add a function that allows me to um, edit the title of a lane in the Kanban board. Uh, edit board lane. Uh, so edit maybe maybe edit lane name. And we we need to pass in here. Um, I really should type this. I don't really have any types yet for the, for this AST. I really need to kind of look at the data structure and type it, but that's going to be a little bit of a boring process. So I don't think I'll do that in my live stream. But what I might do is just put a note here. So I'm going to later. I'm going to put type uh, type defs on the Markdown AST. So I, I I I need to make them specific. I'll I'll make them be specific to the to what I'm expecting basically to come through. Um, but I won't do that yet. Um, what what I do want here is I do want to have um, the path. So the path of the lane, and it's an AST path. Uh, an AST path is actually I think it, it it's an array of any's because it can be. It can be, um, each one of these can be a string or a number actually. So let's, let's type it properly. So each one of these can be a field name in the, in the current object to drill down to, or it can be the number, uh, or the element, basically the element, the index in the array to drill down to. So that's a, that's a slightly nicer type. So that's, uh, in fact, like, again, I'm coming back to a project 
um, that I haven't looked at. <laughs> I just remembered, I already have a, a TypeScript type definition for this that I created a while back, a month ago, I created this. So I'm gonna use that again, actually. So that's the exact same thing. You know, it can be a string or a number, and it's an array of those things. So let's copy that, and I'll use that down here. So we, we're passing in something to identify our the lane we wanna edit in the abstract syntax tree. And I want to pass in the abstract syntax tree that we're going to edit. So we're making a change to this thing here. What is the result? I, I'm, I'm not going to have any result. So I, I could go all functional on this and I could say that it, it produces a whole new abstract syntax tree with the updated thing. Um, oh, the, the thing I've got to update actually is um, I've got to pass in as well. So let's say new lane name is the new, new, new name that we want to plug into the abstract syntax tree. I am just going to edit this data in place. It's, it's, not, it's not a very functional thing, but you know this, this markdown AST could be quite big. And, and reproducing that in a functional way is going to not, it's not going to be great performance, or at least it's going to be tricky to get good performance. So I'm not, I'm not going to attempt to do that. So this function edits the name of a lane in the Kanban board back into the markdown AST. So the idea here is that we could call this function to, to turn our markdown into Kanban board data. And then if we want to edit the title or the, or the, the lane name of a lane, basically we can do that here. We can, we can say where it is in the, in the AST what the new value of it is, and we can plug it back in. So that way, we're, you know, we're editing this rather than over, overwriting it. We're editing it. So I've got an empty function. It's going to have to do something. <clears throat> but that's where we need new tests. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to make this. Uh, this test suite, I want to rename it. What's a good name for it? Um, uh, de it's deserialization, really, isn't it? So it's the process of de. How do you spell that? <laughs> deserialization. That's a tough one. Um, deserialize markdown to board data. Okay, that's a nice name. I'm going to collapse that whole thing. I'm going to start a new one. Like I said, I'll probably move these out to a separate file. Like I do like to have test suites in separate files. I'm not gonna worry about that just yet. Um, and this is this is the reverse process, but it's not it's not serialization because you know serialization is the thing that loses user data. What what I really want to do is um, <coughs> can um, update board data to markdown. So it's it's going in the ver re reverse direction but we aren't doing the opposite of deserialization exactly. We're, we're doing serialization, but it, it, no, it's really editing, it's really updating. It's not, it's not a complete kind of wiping out of that data. So let's start a new test. Um, <clears throat> and what did I call this? I've lost my to-do list, it was at the bottom there, but it's um, can edit lane in markdown AST. Or can can update lane name in Markdown AST. The good thing about these the names of tests is that you can be as descriptive as you want. It's not like you know it's it's going to be some brutally long variable name that you know you're going to have to type everywhere. This is for you to read later, for you to understand what the test does. So make it as good as you can. Uh, and feel free to update it, you know, I will come back and I will come back and I will update the names of my tests as I think of better names for them. <clears throat> so what I want to do in this function, um, well, I want to call this, right? I need to call this. There's no, there's no output of this. Um, now we need, um, what we need here is a markdown AST, right? Or in this case, a test markdown AST. Let's just uh, stub that out for the moment. We're going to come back and, and deal with that in a second. What else do I need here? Let's have a look. 
Oh, I should. It's it's saying this this doesn't exist. Um, but what I can do is I can go peak problem. Cannot find it. Oh, I thought it would. Hang on. What I want. What I actually want to do is not peak the problem. I want a quick fix. Uh, so you can see quick fix here. It's on the on the control dot. Uh, normally I just type control dot to get the hotkey. Um, and and it's going to tell me. It's going to. It's it's found it. This is the beauty of TypeScript as well. Is that uh, it knows where to find things. It knows what types you're looking for and, and stuff like that. So. I've got this function now, but it's now it's saying there's no argument, so now I can actually get some intelligence here, hopefully. Yep, so it's telling me I've got to add new lane name. I just hit, what did I hit then? I, I can't even remember what these hotkeys are. Con control shift space. I don't know if the hotkey is the same on everyone or if it's the same on desktop and laptop or whatever, but I just hit control shift space and it tells me what I need to supply. So what is the new, new name of the lane? Um, let's just call it new name. Now, oh no, sorry, the, the, the markdown AST, I'm just looking at that IntelliSense and the markdown AST is the last parameter. I only just, I only just wrote the function and I've already forgotten how to use it. <laughs> Not that there's anything in the function yet, anyway. Um, so here we need a lane path. So just be explicit that it's, a, it's an AST path. That's nothing at the moment. Um, I might just have to type that just so that it stops complaining. Yep. Okay, so now at the end here, I'm going to do some expectations. So I'm, I'm actually going to be doing expectations on this. And what I want to do is I want to check the name of it. So I actually have some, some test code up here that checks the name of a lane. Um, and I'm just going to have a look at that. <clears throat> So can load a column. Here we're testing. This is this is where we're actually um, testing uh, the title of the column of the lane here. So let's let's just take that code. It's exactly what we need. We don't really need that. That that's the previous function we were testing. So I'll just get rid of that for the moment. But I do need, I do actually need that. So, um, or do I? No, I don't. I don't need that at all. But but I do need the test data. So I'm going to generate the test data in a moment. Uh, in fact, this this totally isn't what I need at all. But it, it it's a good starting point. I think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna turn my attention back to console.log here, so I can find out what I what I need to do because it's. You know, this abstract syntax tree is a complex data structure. It's it's kind of hard to get just in your head. Like, it's it's easier to look at it. Um, but what I need is, I need this function make test data. I need to use that from my new test suite now. So I'm going to, I'm going to pull that up to the next scope up. And it needs all these interfaces here as well. So all I'm doing here is I'm selecting the, the code and I'm hitting alt up arrow to move it outside. Now, hopefully all my other tests still pass. Let's just check that. In doing that, you know, I don't, in, in making this, this change to where the test data function is, I don't want to break any of my previous tests, so that's good. They're all there. You can see my new test suite here, update board data. Um, I've got a passing test because it doesn't actually test anything yet. But my aim, as is my aim, whenever I start a new test, is to have a failing test. So my first step is to have a failing test. So. That's what I'm working towards here. Um, now I can call my makes test data function, and I can probably just copy, you know, this simple example here from can load a column. Look at that. I'm not very consistent with my naming. Anyway, uh, so now I've got some test data. Hopefully you can see that I'm passing in like sort of the sort of the description of what what the AST should look like here, and my helper function make test data is producing an AST. And uh, I still need to flesh this out. I still need to know what path I'm looking at, but to do that, I really think I need to look at the data. And again, to get rid of some of the noise, I'm just going to use it dot only to focus in on just this one test. So my focus at the moment, my sole focus, is to make this test fail. But fail in a way, fail in a way that kind of sets up 
um, sets me up for success afterward. <coughs> so I'm just going to console.log. I'll use JSON stringify again. I should make a help function to this, shouldn't I? So for space indenting, that's what that does. That little four there. <clears throat> so now I should see uh, a log of my AST, that's my test data. What I want to do is I need to figure out what this is going to be. So um, it's pretty easy, really. It's just, uh, I mean, it's going to be the first item under the children, right? I think. I think that is what I decided it was going to be. And in fact, I can check that. I can check that from my, from my previous tests here. If I find the tests uh, down a bit that are to do with loading AST paths. Here it is here. So that, I mean, this is basically what I'm looking for, right? The first, uh, the first lane in the AST has this path, children and zero. So let's jump down to the end. Um, I didn't really even need to look at this. I just sort of thought... You know, I'm just looking at something that I already know. I just have to remember what test I've used it in before. So let's do put that there. I'm just going to comment out this console log at the moment, just in case I need it again in a moment. Now, what I want to what I want to do now, I just want to make sure that this kind of still still works as it is. Um, I, I want to get rid of this typing here. But I just want to make sure everything kind of works as expected before I do that. I shouldn't. I'm just going to remove that typing. I shouldn't need that. You know, I'm a kind of a. I'm kind of a minimalist when it comes to typing. I love the static typing in TypeScript, but when it can infer it, I, I prefer it so that you don't have those types. So that's with the type. That's without. Um, it's a little bit less cluttered with, without that that type specification there. Okay. So now what I want to do. Now I. I this is where I need that console logging in because now. What, what I want, actually what I want is, uh, let's call this old name. What I want is to actually generate some new data here. This sounds a bit weird, right? But um, this is the expected, uh, expected resulting markdown AST. I mean, that's a long name, but um, it kind of describes what it does, right? Except the new version of the Markdown file, or the Markdown AST, is going to have this new name in it instead of instead of the old name. So um, I'm hoping I can use that. It's going to be interesting to see if this works and whether this pans out longer term. Um, uh, I've got a feeling actually there could be a problem with um, checking or comparing recursive data structures like this. Oh, I'm <laughs> you see what I did there? I'm, I'm expecting the, that the expected is equal to the expected. Of course that's gonna of course that's gonna give me a passing test. I think I'm getting distracted. Okay, so my updated test result or my updated test AST should be equal to this new newly generated one. And, and of course it's gonna fail. You know, that's what we're aiming to do here is we're aiming to get a valid failing test. And it's gonna fail because um, you know, uh, we're, we're expecting new name, but it's giving us the old name. And that's because this function has nothing in it. It doesn't do anything. So it has no effect. So now that I've got a failing test, I can write the code to make that test pass. So let's do that now. So this is where Ramda comes in. And I'm actually going to have to... Uh, I don't think I've installed Ramda in here yet. Uh, do, I, do I even need Ramda? I... Like, I just need this one function from Ramda, and I could probably write it myself. And I may do that in the future, just so I don't have this kind of dependency. Uh, uh, I am just going to install Ramda, though. Um, hopefully, that's all I need to do. I, I can't remember if, exactly if that's the right name for it. It seems good. Hopefully, no other projects, you know, got this name, and, and Ramda hasn't got some other wacky name like Node-Ramda or something like that. Uh, I'm going to hopefully hope it's got TypeScript types as well. I have not I have not pre-checked that it supports TypeScript. Um, fingers crossed that it does. It's looking good. Uh, it looks like it's coming down. 
So this allows me to use it in a, in a nice way from TypeScript. Uh, I'm just going to restart my tests now. So I've got my tests running again. Uh, I'm going to, let's just see if I can use Ramda and see if it automatically imports it for me. Cool. So it's showing me everything that, that comes with Ramda, all this stuff. What I'm after is this path function. That's really all that I want. Um, it's giving me an error, you know, I can't find Ramda, da, 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 da. Let's do a quick fix. Import R from module Ramda. So that's great. So that, that's what automatically adds this import up here for, for it. Oh, for some reason it didn't do it as a TypeScript import. That's weird. It's like a, that's like a regular Node.js style import. Don't know why it would do that. But let's try just changing that to the TypeScript style. want to import everything as R. Oh, come on. Why doesn't it like this? Cool. So we've still got our failing test. Um, there's a console.log in there in that test. So I'm just going to get rid of that because I just there's just too much noise on screen. So I'll get rid of that console logging. Uh, I've got Ramda imported. That all work. Those all seem to work, work okay. Now, what I want to do is like super simple, right? Um, I've got my my lane AST path. That's the path that I'm going to pass into this Ramda path function. Um, and I've got the new name for the lane. I've got my markdown AST. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pass that into R path. And the object that I want to actually kind of follow the path and, and, and extract, you know, basically walk, walk down the AST for me and pull out the thing that's there. So this is the, the node that represents the lane. So let's say it's a, it's a node in the tree that represents the lane. <clears throat> uh, so I just want to make sure this is correct even before I you know, try and actually do the next step. So let's just put a, a console log in there that we can see in our testing window here. Um, and that's going to show me the thing that it's pulled out of the AST, which hopefully is, you know, like a subsection of the Markdown AST. Here it is here. So oh, again, um, I need to use the JSON stringify function to actually actually print this properly <clears throat> that'll give me the full massive data structure actually it's not going to be that massive because it's only it's not the full abstract syntax tree it's it's an extract from it so you can see it here this is where I want to plug in old name so I'm, I'm just gonna hard code this for the moment um, like I'm, I'm gonna assume that this is the right format and that that format is not going to change um, so I'm just going to hard code it for that format. And if I find something later that proves that that, uh, that theory or that assertion of mine is wrong, I'll, I will deal with that later. I will fix that later. So I'm, look, I'm going down to the children. Um, I, I could actually use another Ramda path here. In fact, I, I could do, to make this a little bit more elegant, I can make this a concatenated path. So I'm extending... Let's just call it, let's, let's just give this a proper name. We'll call this full path. Full lane st path equals the original path concatenated. What, what are we doing here? So we're, we're drilling down into the children. Uh, we're looking at the first child, which is, it's always going to be text, hopefully. If we find a different scenario, we'll fix that later. Um, and what we're, what we're pulling out of here, or what we want to here, we want to set the value of this actually. So we want this object. We don't want to get, we don't want to pull this value out. We want that object. So that, that should be enough to do what I want. And now I'm going to pass that into the Ramda path function. Um, and I'm just going to double check um, that my console logging is, is, actually my console logging is commented out there. So let's put that console logging back in, restart the testing on that. I'm going to look at the output of that. And I'm just going to make sure uh, it achieved the result that I wanted. I can't even, let, let me just run, rerun the, oh shit, I broke something there. 
let me just rerun the test so I can I, I didn't get that console log that I wanted last time the last kind of round so let's let's try that again Oh, yeah, sorry, there is. Uh, cool. So we've drilled down here. So all I want to do here is I want to set the value field. So if I do this, assuming I've test, set up my test correctly, I can take this lane node. Let's call it, let's actually call it the lane title node. So we've actually drilled down into the lane. Uh, we've got the lane title node. We want to set the value of that to the new lane name. That's literally all we have to do. Can we do that here? Object is of type unknown. <clears throat> Let's, can we, can we get an any out of this? Later on, uh, like I said, later on, I'd like to, to, to put proper typing on these AST nodes, but that could be a pretty big job in itself. This should get me a passing test. Sweet. So I can now I now have a function that allows me to edit the name of, of one of these columns in the Kanban board and plug it back into the Markdown abstract syntax tree. So what I could do from here is now I could I could I could basically uh, serialize this Markdown AST back to an actual file, a literal file in the Visual Studio Code extension, and then I've I've successfully used a Kanban board to update something in a Markdown file without any risk of losing any data. At least that's the theory. <clears throat> that's just one function in a bunch that I've still got to write. And I might I might do a few more of these functions offline in between live streams. So the next time I do a live stream, uh, you'll be able to see the result of that. <clears throat> now, the next thing I'm going to do, just before I commit this, obviously, I've got to get rid of this only. And I've got to make sure that all my other tests run. I'm just going to get rid of the console logging there that I no longer need. So hopefully now I've, I've still got a suite of passing tests. Hopefully I haven't broken anything. It doesn't matter if I've broken anything. I'll find a way to fix it. But I do. I have 13 passing tests now uh, out of 13 total. Everything is passing. You know, it's time to commit this code and push it. So uh, you can see here in my package that I've installed Ramda. I've installed the, they're, they're the TypeScript types for Ramda just there. And that's the actual Ramda package. You can see that I've added in, I've added my import Ramda here in this file. I've added this new function edit lane name. Uh, all looks good. Looks pretty simple. There's nothing. I mean, there is a little bit here that's hard coded, but that's just this this children dot zero slash comma zero here. That's this path that we're concatenating to make the full path. You know, that's just part that's just part of the format. Um, it should have some error checking around it to make sure that it's not badly formatted. Um, that'll have to come later. I'll add extra tests for that. You know this this hard coding it won't it probably won't change i think i think that's just what the data format is um and i've just got to put some error conditions around it to you know that you know if you if you try and throw some badly formatted data at this it's just going to ignore it um and, and not show it in the kanban board or something like that so that'll be easy to deal with later uh because i'm running out of time and here you can see that i've moved the helper function for making test data i've moved that to the top of this file outside of the test suite so that I can use it from both my test suites. Um, and you can see that I've added a new test suite here with my first test for this new function. This function will have other tests and there will be other functions to update other parts of the Kanban board into the markdown file. But I've run out of time, so it's time to, uh, where we go, where are we? It's time to finish up and say thank you for watching. Um, I'm going to do a bit more coding on this between live streams and progress it a bit now. So you've seen a whole range of different things that I do um, to bring this all together. And I'm just going to do more of that. Like normal coding is just what you've seen here. It's just, it's just like continuing to do the same thing over and over. So I probably won't live stream all that. I'll do, I'll do a bit more work in between live streams and you can see the, the result in the next live stream. Uh, and this is going to be it for this year. So, you know. Um, I won't see you again on a live stream until sometime in January. Um, please check on Twitch. Check my Twitter. I'm at AshleyDavis75 on Twitter. I'm at AshleyDavis on Twitch. Please check those places to find out when my next live stream is going to be. I will announce it in early January. You know when, I, when I'm going to I'm going to get back to this project and pick it up. Uh, we're going to do so much exciting stuff with this project in the new year. We're going to finish this this um, serialization and deserialization we've been working on. 
We're going to convert the React UI to TypeScript. We're going to handle all sorts of edge cases and, and problems, deal with those. Uh, we're going to get this running really nicely as a Visual Studio Code extension. And finally, finally, we're going to publish this. We're going to publish this in the Visual Studio market marketplace, and it's going to be free for everyone to use. And you know, the code's open source, so anyone can update it and contribute to it. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. Uh, I wish you a Merry Christmas, uh, a Happy New Year and all that, and I'll see you in January. Bye-bye.